Yo, yo, brave kids, it's Daniel, and welcome back to our Bible lesson for today. Today, we're going to learn that God will make everything right in the end. Before we dive into our lesson, let's see if you can guess some of the things the Bible says about heaven. All right, we're going to do a multiple choice question. In heaven, life with God will be A, very boring, B, grander than we can imagine, or C, just like life on earth. Which one do you think it is? A, B, or C? Yes, B, grander than we can imagine. Let's try another question. In heaven, there will be no more A, happiness, joy, or laughter, B, sadness, crying, or pain, or C, death. Okay, this one's a little bit more tricky. A, B, or C? And you can pick two answers. It's B and C. Great job. In heaven, there will be no more sadness, crying, pain, or death. Isn't that amazing? The Bible has so much good news about how God will make everything right in the end. God appeared to John and showed to him what will happen in the times close to him and the times very far away. In the end, John was able to learn how God is creating a space in heaven for all those that believe in him. As we talked about in our questions before, heaven is grander than we can ever imagine. It is a place with no more sadness, crying, pain, or death. In heaven, we'll be able to praise God with great joy. This month, we have learned some amazing lessons on how God loves us and how we can love others and how we can share the good news of God to everyone around us. So let's stand up together and worship God.
Oh, hey, welcome to the Story Lab. This week we're talking about faith while we take a look at the end of our story. Hey, I'm Carter. And I'm Zeke. We're talking about faith. Which is trusting in what you can't see because of what you can see. Sometimes what you see is so amazing, you can't really describe it. Mm, like the perfect cup of freshly squeezed ice cold lemonade. Ah, deliciously sweet with just enough bright, sour acidity to balance and a perfectly tart finish. That was a pretty impressive description. Thank you. A sort of kaleidoscope for the taste buds. Oh, I love kaleidoscope. Good, because it's time to get your kaleidoscope ready. What? Where? Like this. Uh, um, uh, okay. Go! Whoa! Oh, look at that one. Oh, that's gorgeous. So cool. Oh, I want each one of those kaleidoscopes. Or you could just build your own. For reals? An actual kale kaleidoscope. Totally legit. Then let's, let's make, make it. it. This looks extremely crafty. It's sciency too, I promise. Well, where do we start? Right here. Step one, cut an empty paper towel roll into a nine inch piece. Step two. Find a piece of clear plastic with a flat side. Trace the end of the paper towel tube twice and cut out the circles. After you cut out one of the tiny circles, try to get a small plastic container and fill it with beads. Once you do that, you can put it at the end of the paper towel tube like that. Step three, cut a piece of mirrored paper eight and a half by four inches. Step four, fold the cardstock into a triangular tube. Each side should be approximately one and one third inches wide and then tape it shut. Step five, Slide your triangular tube into the paper tube. It should fit snugly. Then take your smaller plastic circle and push it down over the top of your triangular tube like this. Now, secure the plastic. Tape? Tape. When do we get to add the fun stuff? Right now. Oh. Step six, add translucent beads and sequins on top of the plastic. Perfect. A translucent object allows light, but not detailed shapes, to pass through. Step seven, place the second plastic circle on top of the tube and secure with more tape. And... Perfect. Now, are we done? Can I look? Hold on, we have to decorate first. Have to? Well, no, but it's more fun that way. Now can we look? Yes. Make sure to point it toward the light as you spin it. Oh, wow. Care to share? A kaleidoscope works by reflecting light. When light hits a shiny surface, it rebounds back the way it came like a bouncy ball. When you point a kaleidoscope toward light, the light enters the kaleidoscope and reflects back and forth between the shiny surfaces and colorful objects inside, creating interesting patterns. You want to turn? Yep. But first, it's time for... The Story Before the Story. Today, we're in the book of Revelation, at the very end of the Bible. But before Revelation, way back in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into relationship. So God chose a man named Abraham and promised to bless the whole world through Abraham's family. Abraham's great grandson, Joseph, became second in charge of the land of Egypt and brought his whole family, the Israelites. 
But as the Israelites grew in number, Pharaoh got scared and enslaved them all for centuries. God heard the cries of the people and sent a man named Moses to lead them out of Egypt to freedom. In the land God had promised, the people were ruled by judges and then kings. Some, like David, followed God with their whole hearts. But many kings turned away from God. At last, the Israelites were conquered by foreign nations. But even in captivity, some, like Daniel, remembered and served God. And prophets like Isaiah shared God's promise to send a rescue. Then at the perfect time, God sent Jesus, God's very own son, to live among us. Jesus gave up his life and was killed. But on the third day, he rose to life. After Jesus returned to heaven, the early church grew quickly. But the new believers faced lots of distractions and difficulties, causing some of them to begin turning away from their faith. Which is where our story starts. Take it away. Hey, hey everyone, I'm Brian, and we've got an incredible letter to explore today. Mm -hmm. Jesus' close friend and follower, John, had given his entire life to telling people about Jesus, and he had suffered for it. In fact, at the end of his life, John was exiled to the island of Patmos to live out his final days. But even there, John didn't give up hope. He continued to talk with God. And one day, the Holy Spirit gave John a vision. A loud voice like a trumpet called out, and Jesus himself appeared. Write on the scroll what you see. Send it to the seven churches in Asia Minor. John fell down at the feet of Jesus. Do not be afraid. I am the first and the last. I am the living one. I was dead, but now look, I am alive forever and ever. Jesus gave John special messages about things that were going to happen. Some would happen soon, while others would happen closer to the end of time. I, John, am a believer like you. I am a friend who suffers like you. As members of Jesus' family, we can put up with anything that happens to us. Some of the things that Jesus showed to John were terrible. Others were glorious. Most of them were difficult to understand. But there was one part of the vision that John was most excited to share. The ending. That's the very best part. I can imagine John weeping with joy as he wrote the last things that Jesus showed to him. I saw a new heaven and a new earth. I heard a loud voice from the throne. It said, look, God now makes his home with the people. He will live with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. In the time John writes about, God will live alongside people. We'll be able to see and experience God with our very own eyes. And it just gets better. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death, and there will be no more sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. Things are no longer the way they used to be. He who was sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. Wow, imagine that. All we have ever known is a world full of brokenness. Even on our very best days, we still struggle. I mean, we all know people who are sick or hurting. We know there are people across the world who are hungry or homeless or stuck in the middle of wars. But here Jesus promises that in the end, God will make everything brand new. For those who trust Jesus, there will be no more death, no more pain or even tears. John continued to write down what he saw. There will no longer be any curse. The throne of God and of the Lamb will be in the city. God's servants will serve him. They will see his face. His name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They will not need the light of a lamp or the light of the sun. The Lord God will give them light. They will rule forever and ever. Now, it's really hard for our brains to really think about forever. It's maybe even a little scary, right? But life with God won't be boring. Mm -mm. We'll get to continue working with God to take care of God's incredible creation. Just as each of us is uniquely made, God will have the perfect place for each of us to use our talents and gifts. There's so much we don't know, but we do know this. In the end, God will make right every single thing that's wrong. 
and our place in the story will be amazing. The end. That is pretty much the most amazing thing ever. Yeah, I mean, we often think of heaven as some floaty place in the clouds. With chubby baby angels. But that's not even close. <laughs> no way. Life forever with God will be more glorious and grand than we could possibly imagine. It's like Christmas and birthdays all rolled into one and a gazillion times better. So what's our part in the story? Every day we face pain and frustration. We see so much hurt and brokenness in the world around us, it's easy to feel just helpless and hopeless. But we know this incredible truth. In the end, God will make everything right. And that should give us true hope. Out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. Sometimes God will make things right now or give you the strength to help make things right. But often we have to wait and live in hope, knowing that in the end, God will make right every single thing that's wrong in the world. And in the meantime, we can share that amazing truth with others so that they can have hope too. I think you got it. See you next time. So, here's the thing. God will make everything right in the end. Do you think heaven will look anything like this? I don't think we have a clue. <laughs> but I wouldn't mind if it did. Thanks for joining us in the Story Lab. See, See you, you next time. time. Oh, Zeke, have you seen this? What's in there? Give me a turn. I think I can see the future. No way. Okay. Okay, props. Costumes, uh, facial hair. Uh, what am I missing? John! Where? Oh, yeah! <laughs> I'm so glad you're here. Brandon, are you ready for this? I think so. Are you? Didn't you just hear me when I came in? I Oh, yeah! <laughs> so, yes? Yes. Oh. Is there anything else that needs to be done? Yeah, I, I, I just need to organize everything to make sure oh, that's all organized. Oh, organize, We got this. Uh, yeah, but I just need to put it We couple... got this! We got this. Ladies and gentlemen, the So-and-So Show presents the whole Bible. This goes over here. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah! In the beginning, there was darkness. And then God said, let there be light. And there was light, and God saw that it was good. And then God created everything else, the sky. The ground. Plants. The sun and the moon. The birds of the air. Kaka! The fish of the sea. Kaka! And then God made every kind of animal. <laughs> and God saw that it was good. <laughs> it was paradise. Then, on the sixth day, God saved the best for last. God created people and they were created in God's own image. Hi, I'm Adam. That's Eve. Hey, wait, isn't this the fruit God told us not to eat? Uh-oh. After Adam and Eve broke God's rule, they were banished from paradise. Their relationship with God was Broken. It's a bummer. But, even when people disobeyed God, God still loved them. Yeah, God still loved them. In fact, many years after Adam and Eve, God chose a man named Abraham to give a very important promise. Oh, I'm so old. It sure is hard to be old. I wish my wife and I had had children to take care of us now that we are so old. But we didn't, and we never will. 
because we're too old. Abraham. Yes, Lord. I will make you into a great nation. All nations on earth will be blessed because of you. I'm old and I don't have any children, but I believe you, Lord. I have a son. I'll call you Isaac. God's promise to Abraham started to come true. Abraham's family was growing into a great nation. They were God's chosen people. Isaac had children and grandchildren. One of his grandchildren was named Joseph. La 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 la, I'm Joseph. I had a dream where I saw all my brothers bowing down to me. <laughs> Joseph's brothers didn't like him very much, so they beat him, had him thrown in a well, and sold into slavery. But my, my, my dream. And they took his coat. No, oh, that's mine. Don't no, this is part of this. It's part of the story. Give it. Ah. Uh, the Lord was with Joseph, no matter where he was. And he went from slavery to the second most powerful leader in Egypt. So God's people, the Israelites, moved to Egypt. Let my people go! Too soon, too soon. Oh. While in Egypt, the Israelites multiplied, and the Egyptian king Pharaoh had them enslaved. Let my people Still go! Too soon, too soon. God spoke to a man named Moses from a burning bush, telling him to free the people. So Moses went to Pharaoh and said, Moses went to Pharaoh and said, well, Let my people go! Yes, but Pharaoh said, No! Please. No! Pretty please. No! Come on. No! Sugar on top? No! All right. So God sent ten plagues on the land of Egypt until finally Pharaoh set the Israelites free. Yeah, but as they were leaving, Pharaoh changed his mind and sent an army after the Israelites. Yeah, but God made a way for them to escape. God parted the Red Sea, and the Israelites were able to walk through like it was dry land. And then they wandered around for 40 years. Where God gave them the law, which told them how to treat each other. 40 years! Okay, but after the desert, uh, God gave the people a king. Oh, yeah. King Saul. Yeah, how'd that turn out? Uh, um, the, the, the second king God chose was a, a shepherd boy named David. Right, this yes. is a good part. Okay. <sighs> David was anointed the next king even while King Saul was still in charge. And he was extremely popular because he was brave enough to fight a giant named Goliath. I will fight you in the name of the Lord. But I'm a giant and you are just... Oh, my rib. Ah. I win. Yeah. David was a king after God's own heart, but he made a bunch of mistakes. And eventually, his family and the kingdom of Israel was split apart. <laughs> he couldn't let me have this. No, that's just what happened. No, it seems like only bad stuff happened. No, good stuff happened too. I mean, remember the story of Daniel? Oh, you mean the guy who was kidnapped and raised in another country his whole life? Yeah, but, yeah, but he followed God the whole time. Which got him thrown into a lion's den. But he survived. <sighs> hey, okay, okay, you want good news? What about the, the prophecies of Isaiah? A child will be born to us. A son will be given to us. You know who that's about, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. God promised to send a savior. And then hundreds of years later. Hundreds a, of years? Yeah, I know it was a long time. Hundreds hundred, of years! No, but you're not listening to the important hundreds part. Hundreds of, of years! Okay. Hundreds! I'm going to need some help. It's Bible story time with Kellen! More than 100! I didn't think you guys would need me today. I thought you were telling the whole Bible yourself. We didn't quite make it through the whole Bible. Oh, how far did you get? Hundreds of years, Kellen. There. Oh, you didn't even get to the New Testament. That has some of the best parts. Jesus was born. In a feeding trough for animals. Yeah, but that just shows us that Jesus came for everyone. He grew up and performed all kinds of miracles too. He taught things in a way that no one had ever taught before. He showed us how to love one another. Yeah, and then what happened? Well, Jesus died. But he died to pay for the sins of the world. He died to save us.
Yeah, and then Jesus came back from the dead. Yep, and he gave his followers a mission to tell his story to the whole world and a promise to be with them to the very end. Yeah, and then what happened? Well, Jesus was taken up into the clouds. <laughs> okay, I get it. In this big, amazing story that God is telling, there are a lot of ups and downs. It's like a roller coaster. The story of our own lives can feel like that too, right? We have our ups, good things happen to us that make us feel happy, and we have our downs, things we wish didn't happen that make us angry or upset. But I'll let you in on a little secret. I believe I know how the story will end. Come again. This huge story God started has a huge ending too. And God gave us a clue on what that just might be. Oh, then uh, take it away, Kellen. Like I said, before Jesus left, he gave his disciples a mission to tell the world about him. And he gave them a promise to always be with him. The promise came true when God sent the Holy Spirit to be with everyone who put their faith in Jesus. And with the help of the Holy Spirit, the disciples could take their mission very seriously. They started churches, they wrote letters, they traveled all over the world to tell people about Jesus. One of these disciples was named John. When John was very old, he lived on an island called Patmos. When the Holy Spirit gave him a vision, he heard a loud voice that sounded like a trumpet that said, Write on a scroll what you see. Send it to the seven churches in Asia Minor. You can read for yourself what John wrote in the Bible. It's in a book we call Revelation. In his vision, John saw a lot of things that, that are hard to understand, but they pointed to what the end of the story will look like. A time where God will make all the wrong things in the world right. And here's what John heard and saw. I heard a loud voice from the throne. It said, Look, God now makes his home with the people. He will live with them. They will be his people. And God himself will be with them and be their God. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. There will be no more death and there will be no more sadness. There will be no more crying or pain. Things are no longer the way they used to be. He who was sitting on the throne said, I am making everything new. That's hard to imagine, isn't it? There will be no more sadness? Really? There won't be anything to be sad about? And no more pain either? That's what John heard. Think of it. In this world, we all struggle. And we know other people who struggle, people who are sick or hungry, people who don't have homes. There are wars and famine and brokenness all over the world. But at the end of the story, God will fix everything that is broken. God will make everything new. Whoa. So when we see or experience the bad stuff in life, we can have faith that God will make everything right in the end. Yep. That's an epic ending, Kellen. Thank you so much. Hey, <laughs> no problem. I'll see you next time. You feeling better? Oh, yeah! <laughs> <laughs> Great. Hey, sometimes you gotta think ahead, you know? Uh, the here and now can get kinda hard, but it's really inspiring to think of what God has in store next with heaven and making everything new. Yeah, it's fun to dream about. In fact, yeah. Reveal the question. What do you think heaven will be like? Oh, that's easy. Lots of clouds, gold, everyone will have a harp. You watch a lot of cartoons. I do. I don't know. I I've always imagined that it will be really bright, you know, like light everywhere. Oh, that's very cool. Yeah. That's very cool. Hey, and what about you? What do you think heaven will be like? Yeah, talk about it together, and we'll see you next time on The So-and-So Show. Yeah, you know, I'm feeling pretty good now. You want to tell the whole Bible again? I think we're out of time. Nah, come on. Come on. Ah, we got this. Ah. We got this. See you next time. In the beginning, it was dark. God said, let there be light. Yeah, then God made everything. Caca! Uh, caca! And 
Adam and Eve broke the rules. Ah. Mm, mm. But God still loved people. I chose Abraham. I'm old. Hi. You're going to have a baby. Oh, nope, not twins. You're Isaac. <laughs> I'm Isaac. I'm Isaac's grandson, Joseph. Give me that coat. Okay. Moses. No. Oh. Let my people go. Moses. <laughs> no, David. David. David, David killed the lion. Oh. Oh. Ooh. Are you all right? I, it was just a beard, Brandon. Oh yeah. <laughs> Revelation. Yeah, we made it. Good job. Yeah. All the way through. That was great. You're welcome. me from the start you're the one who knows my heart you are there for me jesus you are showing me the way love and kindness every day you are helping me jesus so i'll follow a great story remember god will make everything right in the end thanks for joining me today i will see you next week